Hello, I'm Matt Hatton, founding partner at Transformer Insights. I'm conducting some guest interviews for the Things Conference. And I'm delighted to say I've got with me Twofu Lu from Semtech. Twofu, welcome. Oh, thanks, Matt. Uh, glad to be here. Uh, excellent. If you could just say a few words of introduction to yourself, who you are, what you do. I mean, most of the people who are attending the event, I'm sure, will be familiar with Semtech, but uh, maybe there's a few aren't. So a couple of words about that, I think, would be a useful thing as well. Yeah, uh, I'm Tofu. Uh, I joined the Semtech uh, in June last year. So I'm a product marketing manager and uh, responsible for Aurora products. OK, very good. And we're here to talk about specifically satellite, the use of satellite or the um, support for long range uh, frequency hopping spread spectrum, which was announced by the Law Alliance back in November. Um, can you tell me a little bit about uh, long range FHSS, what the difference is between that and LoRa, and why it's important for all the people who are tuned in? Yeah, sure. So long range FHSS, uh, is a different modulation technology compared to LoRa. Uh, it is uh, a frequency hopping spread spectrum. So FHSS uh, stands for frequency hopping spread spectrum. So basically, uh, when a uh, LoRa uh, end node or LoRa transceiver device uh, sends a packet, that packet will be bro uh, broken into uh, different pieces and uh, each pieces are sent using a different different frequency so the selection of the frequency is random so that's why it's called frequency uh, hopping and uh, the advantage of uh, frequency hopping sp spectrum is its uh, robustness against interference in addition we also have uh, uh, this feature called header repetition so the header of the packet can be repeated once, twice, or three times to further enhance the robustness of the uh, you know transmission. So that's uh, so that's the difference uh, compared to LoRa. LoRa is called uh, chirp spread spectrum. So these two are complete uh, different uh, modulation technologies. Okay, and then when we when we talk about uh, announcing the support for it, then how does that work? Can we expect uh, can customers who are used to using LoRa expect to be able to connect via satellites that are, that are forming a network around the world? How is that likely to work? Yeah, so the LRFHS will be supported on three of uh, Semtex existing transceiver chips, SX1261. SX1262 and LR1110. So these devices are already on the market. Uh, we'll be able to provide a software update. So with the a new software that's supporting the new LR FHSS uh, uh, based on the LoRa WAN spec, the new uh, LoRa Alliance spec, and uh, it will be able to uh, uh, transmitting LR FHSS signal. OK, and and is the infrastructure there? Do we have the satellites that are uh, that are already supporting this this long range frequency hopping spread spectrum uh, technology? It's not one that I know about well, so so um, I, I don't know about the infrastructure that's there and available to use at the moment. Yes, so uh, we are working with multiple satellite companies on the LRFHSS technology and uh, one satellite company already has a satellite in space that utilize uh, this technology already. OK, um, do, you, do you happen to know where that is? Uh, where? You yeah. Mean? Geographically. Uh, ge geographically is uh, the, the satellite is a LEO satellite. OK, it, okay. It, it rotating around the Earth so it's move, multiple times around, a okay. day. Yeah. OK, gotcha. Uh, so next question, um, which LRFHSS, uh, sorry, can you tell me why LRFHSS is a good choice for enabling that direct link from the end device to satellites? Yes, so um, LRFHSS has a lot of uh, uh, features that uh, uh, it's uh, ideally suited for the direct link to satellite. So. Um, one is the long range. Obviously, it's a long range. It can reach uh, the satellite and also uh, low power. So it has 
comparable power consumption uh, to LoRa. Okay. So the battery can last, you know, between five to ten years. And also, uh, it has much big capacity compared to LoRa. So uh, let's give you. Uh, let me give you an example. So if you use LoRa lowest data rate, which is called SF12, which is around 250 bits per second, with uh, LRF HSS. So LRF HSS uh, data rate, it's, uh, um, it's uh, 162 bits per second or 325 bits per second. So it's comparable to the SF12 uh, uh, LoRa data rate. So LRF HSS capacity is about 200 times of the LoRa SF12 capacity. Mm. So that means this is very, very important. So when a satellite company launches a satellite, it's very expensive. So every satellite company wants their satellite to connect to as many uh, nodes uh, as possible to have a good return on investment. So with LRF HSS, uh, uh, we can send millions of uplinks per day to a satellite, millions of uplinks per day. So that's, as I mentioned, uh, 200 times the capacity of a uh, LoRa uh, lowest data rate. Yeah. And that, that's 200 times the, the, uh, the bandwidth for, for data transmission. Have I understood so that correctly? Yes, it's the number okay. of uplinks per day. But still with the same battery uh, life expectancy. Yes. So basically, uh, the the uh, the gateway uh, can uh, can process uh, uh, you know millions of uplinks per day, and, mm. and uh, then compare to uh, to the uh, uh, to to LoRa. So it's about two hundred times in terms of capacity. So when uh, when a satellite company put a uh, LRF HSS capable gateway into their set satellite. So they can connect um, uh, a lot more uh, end nodes. Mm -hmm. OK, interesting. This is all very interesting about the technology, but obviously the technology is nothing without the use cases. Uh, have you been giving some thought to use cases for satellite IoT, particularly using this LR FHSS technology? Yeah, so uh, use cases. Uh, so the satellite IoT is uh, targeted on uh, remote areas and hard to reach areas. So mm -hmm. these areas uh, does not have cellular connection, does not have Wi-Fi connection, may not have you know uh, LoRa gateways nearby. So the for these areas, you know, using uh, satellite IoT is ideal. For example, wildlife tracking, uh, and also. Uh, you know, smart agriculture to monitor soil conditions, you know, sending, uh, you know, soil condition uh, to, through satellite mm -hmm. and also tracking, uh, log you know, logistics tracking, you know, tracking goods uh, on land, uh, on sea. And these are the ideal use cases for satellite. OK, very good. And do you see it as being a replacement then for the land-based technologies? The, the the examples you gave there were all ones where perhaps there isn't going to be coverage, although, you know, LoRa cells can be enormous. Um, but the examples you gave there were for ones that are, um, where there possibly isn't going to be coverage. Do you see it as also being a, a, a potentially a competing technology for, for land-based systems? No, they are, they, they are, uh, they are complementary. So LoRa and LR FHSS technology can coexist uh, in the same network. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, LR FHSS for satellite can cover uh, a lot of remote areas that cannot be covered right now by uh, you know by 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 cellular and by Wi-Fi and by uh, uh, you know potentially by other wireless uh, technologies. So, so in these kind of uh, 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 situations, so uh, using satellite is uh, is uh, is an ideal way, you know, to sending these sensor data out. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
yeah, that that makes that makes some sense. OK, very good. And anything else that's interesting that's happening in this satellite space at the moment that we should be uh, aware of? Yeah. So uh, another thing uh, uh, need to be aware of uh, with the LRF HSS is is a is a low cost solution, as I mentioned that uh, it uses our existing LoRa transceiver chips, uh, 1261, 1262, and LR1110. So it provides a, a, a very you know, low-cost solution for, for, uh, for end node sensors to connect to the satellite. And also, a very important point is that um, right now, LRFHS is part of the LoRa1 uh, specification and it's a part of the LoRaWAN ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So that is a very, very important point. So with a strong ecosystem of LoRaWAN support, mm -hmm. that will really help to uh, accelerate the adoption of LRFHSs uh, okay. in satellite applications. Yeah. Very good. So you would expect the other members of the LoRa Alliance to be, to be making some quite uh, substantial use of this as a, as a technology? Yes, yes. Okay. Very good. On that note, it's been a very interesting dive into a new technology that I wasn't familiar with, LRFHSS. Uh, Toifu Lu, thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Matt. Thanks for inviting me.